Hello and welcome to Pabli. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a dynamic link in the call to action button while sending WhatsApp messages using Wati inside Pabli Connect. So a lot of users use Wati as a WhatsApp API solution to send automated WhatsApp messages in their Pabli Connect automation workflow. And while creating a WhatsApp message template inside Wati, you also get an option to send some kind of call to action buttons or quick reply buttons. So when we create a template, at bottom you can see this buttons option. Under buttons, you can see two options. Either you can send a quick reply button or a call to action button. In quick reply, you can basically add up to three quick reply messages in the WhatsApp message which you are sending. And by selecting any one option in the sent message, the user can send a quick reply to you. But if you select a call to action as a button, then in that case, we have three options. Either you can send a offer code over here, like if you select offer code as the option, you can just enter the coupon code over here and send that coupon code to the user. And by clicking on that button, the user can directly copy the coupon code and use it on your website or any other platform. The second call to action type button is call phone. So if you want in the WhatsApp message which you are sending, you can give a call to action button using which directly the user can give you a phone call. You just have to select this call phone option, enter the button text. For example, I'll enter the text as call now and then the same text will be shown. And after that, you have to enter the phone number with the country code that on which particular phone number you want the users to call. And by clicking on this button in the WhatsApp message, user can directly make you a call. The third type of call to action button is visit website. And this particular button is a dynamic button. Let's say I am using an example of Calendly. Using Calendly, I'm getting the appointment bookings from the user. And here in my public Connect automation as well, I have selected Calendly as the trigger. Now I want that whenever I get the appointment booking, I want to send a confirmation message on WhatsApp to the same user. So I'm using Wati to send the WhatsApp messages and in the messages, I want to send the rescheduling link as well. Now, when we select the call to action button as the button type, then still we can add up to three call to action buttons over here. As you can see, we have selected the first call to action button as website. And here we want to change the name of this button. For example, I'll name it as reschedule. So this is the name of the first call to action button. The second one is a phone call. And here in phone call, I'll name it as call now, for example. And third one is for the coupon code. So still in this case as well, you can add up to three call to action button, but the phone call and copy offer code, these two call to action buttons are static, are not dynamic. This means while creating the template, you have to enter the phone number and the coupon code, and you can't change these things later on in your public connect workflow. But if your call to action button time is visit website, in that case, you can enter a dynamic link. So after naming it here, it is asking us, is this a static link or a dynamic link? Like if you want to send the same link to all the users with the WhatsApp message in the call to action button, you can select the static link and enter this link over here while creating the template. But I want to send a dynamic link. This means to every user to whom I will be sending the WhatsApp messages with this call to action button, I want to add a personalized link. So we have selected dynamic. Now I have already created a template message in my YT account where I'm sending a dynamic link. And this is the template message which I'm sending as an appointment confirmation to my users who are booking the appointment on Calendly. And in this message, I also want to send a rescheduling to the user just in case if they want to reschedule the appointment. But every user will have a different, a unique rescheduling link. So here in our public connect workflow, when I receive the details of a new invite of a new appointment booking from Calendly in the trigger step, in those responses, we get the response for the reschedule URL. And this is a unique URL, but the starting part of this URL is the same. So here you can see in this template message as well, where we have added this reschedule button of visiting a website, and this is a dynamic button. The starting part, the initial part of this URL of this link is the same. But the second part where we have the unique ID which makes this URL unique is dynamic over here. And I'm going to show you how you can enter this dynamic part of this URL of this call to action button in your public connect workflow. So we will just scroll down and directly come to this action step of party. But before that, let me show you that using a simple step of public connect that is called text formatter, 
I have separated this URL, this unique ID from this complete reschedule URL. So here you can see I have received the response over here. And in this response, you can see the unique part. The static part of the URL is separated. And after the static part, whatever URL, if you have anything else, even after this, I have extracted or separated that particular part over here in the response. And I want to add this response, this particular unique ID as the dynamic text and send it to Vati while sending the WhatsApp message. So we will just come to the Vati action step. And here I have already connected my Vati action step. Now here from Calendly responses, I want to enter the phone number, the mobile number of the user to whom we want to send the message. So I have mapped it. Now here in the template section, you can see a list of all the template messages which you have in your YT account. Out of all of this, we will be selecting this template of appointment confirmation. Then let me give this broadcaster name, for example, appointment confirm. This is the name of the broadcast, just some dummy details. Now here comes the part of custom parameters. Now in this template, you will notice I have added some custom parameters. Like after hi, I have the name of the person. I wanted to mention the name of the person. So this is one custom parameter. The second custom parameter is the date and time. That at what date and time this appointment, this meeting is going to get started. And the third custom parameter over here will be our dynamic URL. So here in our dynamic URL, after entering the static URL, we wanted to add the dynamic part as well. So we have added a custom parameter for that too. And here, and we can enter the details of all of these custom parameters in this custom param field. And in the help text, you can see this particular object. In the same format, we have to enter the value for all the custom parameters. First, in front of name, we have to enter the name of the custom parameter. And after that, after a comma in front of value, we have to enter the value of it. So the name of our first variable, first custom parameter is NAME name. So here what we are going to do in front of name in this double quotes, we are going to enter the same name of the variable. And what is the value we want to put in front of that? In front of value in double quotes, we have to enter it. So I want to mention the first name of the user. So from the drop down from currently responses, we are going to select and map the response of first name. And similarly, we have to basically map the rest of the things as well. We are going to set up the rest of the custom parameters too. So after entering the value of the post custom parameter, just add a comma and enter the same format. The name of our second custom parameter is date underscore time. So we will just copy the second custom parameter in name. We are going to enter date underscore time and using date time formatter, I have received the date and time, the start date and time over here. So using currently we have received the start date and time, but it was not in the correct format. So using date time formatter, I have corrected it. And from that response, we are going to map it over here. Then we are going to enter the third variable over here, the third custom parameter. Just add a comma, then enter the same text, same format over here, like we have name in double quotes. Now the third custom parameter of my template is this dynamic link over here. So we have created this dynamic link. We have added this call to action button of dynamic link. And here under dynamic link, after entering the static URL, we have added this third custom parameter. The name of this custom parameter is reschedule underscore ID. You can basically give any other name, but you just have to copy the name of this custom parameter from here of the dynamic link and paste it over here in front of name. After that, in front of value, whatever text, whatever data or information you want to enter over here after this static URL, like after static URL, whatever unique URL, unique link or dynamic link you want to add, you have to just map it. You just have to enter it over here. So using text formatter, we have extracted, we have received the unique part of a URL of the link. So I'll just select it from the drop down and map it over here. So in this way, what you can do using the same format, you can enter the details of the custom parameter, which you have created in your body template. And if you have added a custom parameter for dynamic link as well, you can enter the custom parameter. You can enter the value of that dynamic link over here in the same format. After mentioning all the custom parameters from our template, just click on save and send test request. And when we click on save and send test request, here you can see we have received some response. And this response seems to be a positive response to us. This response shows that the custom parameter which we have entered over here with the values of this custom parameter and this template message is sent to this number. So let's check it. 
we will go to the WhatsApp account of this number. And here in the new tab, you can see I have opened the WhatsApp account and we have received the message. We have the exact same message template which we have created in Vati over here. And in this template message, you can see after hi, we have the post name of the person. Then here you can see we have the same date which we have received from Calendly. And also we have added a call to action button over here. Now, if you, the user, if you will just click on this button over here, it will take you to this link, to the same page, the rescheduling page of the appointment. This is the exact same link which we have received from Calendly in the trigger step. So from trigger responses, we have received this rescheduling link. If you copy it and paste it in the new tab, you will see it is the exact same link over here. So in this way, if you want to send some kind of dynamic links, dynamic URLs with the WhatsApp message in the call to action button, you can basically use this method to enter the value of those dynamic fields inside Pabli Connect. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you have any kind of doubts or queries, you can write us in the comment box below. So this is it for today's video. Thank you. Have a great day. If you have any kind of doubts or queries, you can email us at support at or post it on our forum over here. Or you can write us in the comment box below too. If you want to check out the pricing of Pavli Connect, you can visit this link. And if this video was helpful to you, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Pavli. So this is it for today's video. Thank you. Have a great day.